welcome to Freiburg, a city steeped in the history and development of polymer science. It was here, at the Albert Ludwigs University, that Hermann Staudinger carried out his pioneering work on macromolecules that led him to being awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1953, work that went on to underpin much of the world we know today in applications such as healthcare, energy provision, and technology. Every year, some of the world's best polymer scientists meet in Freiburg to update each other on new developments and progress in the field, and some of the editors of the macromolecular journals, publications founded by Staudinger, took the opportunity to speak with some of the major players attending this year about their views on the future of polymer science, exciting recent developments, and the impact of polymer science on and their contribution to society. Well, when you take a look at uh, uh, the impact of polymers, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Yeah? Just close your eye and touch something, and you're likely to touch a polymer. Yeah? So our high quality of life would be unfeasible, unthinkable without polymers. Yeah? And unfortunately, at the moment, some people claim that everything was done, yeah? and we should only modify the processes, make things cheaper. This is wrong. Yeah? There's a lot of challenges out there. Yeah? Take a look at people. People are getting older. They want to have high quality of life. Yeah? They are living in cities. They need energy. Yeah? And they need a lot of new materials. And uh, uh, when you take a look at this, uh, most of the materials, uh, a significant portion of it is polymers. Yeah? Why? It's very easy. You can e uh, easily tailor polymers. Yeah? And it's very easy to scale up. Yeah? And also, it's cheap. In my opinion, um one of the most important challenges in polymer science is at the moment that we can contribute to society in various aspects. And one aspect I want to highlight especially is energy research. And this is also the topic I'm representing. So what we try to do is research on materials which are energy related and with energy related, the, um, I mean solar cell research, thermoelectric research, um, but also um, battery or supercapacitors, which are all applications which can be achieved with polymers. And the nice thing about polymers is that they are lightweight, tailor tailorable, um, and you can process them quite easily because they are solution processable. Yeah? So just think about solar cells or thermoelectrics, which you can really make roll by roll on large sheets, just like a newspaper, yeah? and use that as energy source, essentially, yeah? or for, for energy saving. Yeah? So again, the lightweight point comes into the game. The biggest challenge in, in polymer application, of course, and this is something that uh, I don't know how to solve is, uh, what do we do with the waste we create? We produce 300 million tons polymers per year worldwide. We know we have a, almost a continent in the Pacific Ocean of uh, polymers drifting in, in, uh, and floating around that take hundreds if not thousands of years to degrade. That is a big, big challenge for the future. It's not something we are investigating in our academic research, but it's one of the drawbacks of polymers that uh, associate with the broad use of polymers. There is also an an issue associated with their final disposal and, and uh, well, somehow economically and ecologically viable reuse, at least of the components. The biggest challenge for polymer science really depends on your point of view. Um, if you think about society and the global changes that are going on at the moment, um, I think we can agree that uh, polymer science can have a very big influence on a sustainable development and there are a lot of ch challenges to overcome. What kind of feedstock are we using? Is the use of a renewable feedstock enough? Certainly not. We have to develop sustainable approaches to use them. We have to replace some materials. We have to develop some drop-in materials. So there are a lot of challenges in this direction that we have to address and that we as a community, polymer science, together with, of course, a lot of different disciplines, I only mentioned biotechnology, for instance, will have a huge impact on this in the future. There are many things that are really fascinating. And uh, if, I, if I look in the, in, in the area that I know, in, in self-assembly and driven self-assembly of block copolymers, basically, I think you can, you can look in two directions. So the first one would be more oriented to chemistry. And I think in this area, um, we, we have a maturity in terms of control polymerization methods that we, can, that we can have. You can use 
control polymerization techniques, uh, classical one, I would say, but also you can get inspiration from nature uh, to build uh, macromolecular systems. And altogether, uh, I think now we can really design systems that are very well coded at the macromolecular level. So we can code, of course, for amphiphilicity. This is obviously what we do when we, when we design cell, uh, block copolymer systems. But we can include in the coding more sophisticated properties. For example, I firmly believe that block copolymers and more complex block copolymers, but more simple ways um, to make them, still play a key role. If you want to have materials that show a special kind of compartment structures, that uh, exhibit uh, phase-separated patterns on surfaces that are interesting for membranes um, with specific separation properties that are interesting for all kinds of materials, maybe in, in uh, interaction with an inorganic uh, nanoparticle component, um, even in, in specific nanocomposites. If you want to go in this direction, you will need simple ways, not break seal, you will need simple ways to make block and multi-block structures. And I think that's one of the big challenges still, even after 60 years of uh, living polymerization. One field I find very interesting and where we are also working on at the moment is sequence control, sequence definition. I think we will see a lot of progress in the near future on that, which will open up new applications, be it in data storage or something else very fancy. Another area that's of course uh, developing, um, although it's already very highly developed in many companies also in Germany, is the area of polymers for medical application. So just think of dialysis uh, modules uh, for kidney dialysis, uh, special uh, membranes you need for these purposes. Think of package packaging in, in a nano size way, um, RNA uh, or even DNA or, or, or drugs or peptides for specific applications. Finally, even in a way that you can target these materials with the polymer shell you put around them. This, of course, is something that we are still 150 years after Paul Ehrlich created his magic bullet. We still have not yet achieved, and this would, of course, be fascinating. In another field I find very interesting, and which is, of course, also very important for science as a general theme, but also for um, our society is sustainability and what can we do about sustainability regarding polymer science and I think we can do quite a lot because as we all know polymers are the largest output of our chemical industry and if we can change something there and be only a little bit more sustainable at the end that would be great. Mm -hmm.